see the ground through this. We're going to need to fix that. Getting to 200 knots, which is about 230 miles an hour, is really difficult. Even for an airplane, it is very, very difficult. Just like a car, the Bugatti Veyron or one of those crazy things, to get to 300 miles an hour or 250 or whatever it's at right now. It's very difficult because the faster you go, the resistance becomes proportional, exponential. In order to get one more mile an hour, it takes like this much more instead of this much more. So for an airplane to go 100 miles an hour, no problem. You barely need 65 horsepower, you know, less than 100 horsepower to do that. To get one to go 200 miles an hour, you need to almost triple the horsepower to overcome the resistance and all the math stuff that gets in the way, or you can make it slipperier. So what we're doing today is we've got some gaps right here. So this one, if we measure, it's only that big not even a tenth of an inch. It's 0 0.77, 0 0.0. It's really small. That's what, that's what I'm trying to tell you. We're gonna seal up these uh, gaps on this thing and then we're gonna go raise it. Yep, it's about that time. Also, you may be asking, well, Jimmy, what about the Magneto stuff? We were having an issue over there. Yep, still got that issue. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna pop those off because we gotta send them in. They're still waiting for the magnetos because everything's back ordered now and takes a little while longer to get. So we're gonna pull those off, put the old ones back on there, get everything zeroed back again, and do this while we're waiting on those parts to get checked, confirmed, to see what the heck I did to break them. And then we've got some other high BTU add-ons for this thing right here that you're not gonna wanna miss. How much in knots do you think we're gonna get by sealing up the gap here? That is a big old gap. That's like that much of a gap. Yeah, wow, that's a lot. 0.4 of an inch. We got a little bit right here, that's all. That's all we need there to smooth the air that comes over this. And in order to go faster, we gotta fix the brakes on the other side, you see? Cause that nose wheel, you can't actually turn it with the steering wheel or your brake pedals. It just free casters like a shopping cart. All the engine spins this way, which makes the plane go this way, which means you gotta hold the brake on this side to keep it straight. A handful but in doing so we wear the brake pad out on that side a lot faster than this side so we also have to change that brake pad if we want to get this thing stopped after we get going super duper fast safety first nah who am i kidding this is jimmy's world what could possibly go wrong so you saw the video with the new guy that quit on his first day uh, this was one of the things he was helping me with. He's a smart kid. That's probably why he quit on the first day because he saw what <laughs> we do around here and was like, yeah, I don't want to have anything to do with Jimmy's world and the crap they got going. That is just an accident waiting to happen. He's not wrong. Okay, we got keys. And we got parts. Yeah, so Jimmy's world experimental means homemade stuff starting with our jack to jack the other side up. What we had to do was buy a jack made in China, check, and then you have to take that thing off and put this one on there. And when I bought it, uh, yeah, that one's, they're different, different sizes. We're gonna see how this goes. So that meant the pin that I took out of that one didn't fit in this one, it was too short, so we had to go get a bolt. Oh yeah, no problem. Boom. Shakalaka, boom, just like that. What do you think? Not what you would call straight. Yeah, well, we're, we're gonna be fine. Check out, that is our hole that we jack this airplane up with. And you know, you always wanna be under the thing that you're jacking up, cause that's the safest. Oh, it's going up. Hey, look at that. It came off the ground. Oh, look at that. Let's just see just how worn out these brake pads are. Definitely worn. That's oh, for sure. That is new brake pad. That is old brake pad. Yeah. Look at that. Ah, oh, son of a biscuit. Well, now we get to bleed the brakes again. Fantastic. All right. Yeah, like that. Oh, 
Oh yeah, fantastic. You guys thought we were gonna work on it without a hammer. Well, you're wrong. Here you go. This is proper use of a hammer. Boom. Oh, there we go. Here's my thought right. process on everything that happened here. I tried to do too much at once, and uh, I don't know at what stage which thing did not agree. And because I did so many things at once, now I don't know which was one of the, the one thing that kind of messed it all up. So what I'm gonna do is just start totally over. Just gonna yank both of these things off. Yeah, just start over. Put both of the original magnetos back on it. Go from there. Yay. We don't have any power connected. I'm gonna put my thumb on it and wait for it to go. Oh, like that. We are there, boys. One, one magneto out. We will have to swap those gears over. This is not meant to come back off very easily. Yes. Don't go telling everybody that I actually use a torque wrench every once in a while. I've got a reputation to uphold it. Okay, we got our gear done, got our cutter pin in. We got our little pin in the back that holds it from going too far. Go like that. There it is. Yes, okay, that's where it needs to go. And like that, bada bing, bada boom. That one's out. Nice. Okay. Money! Bam, baby, that's how we do that. The only thing that's different from the original before I started messing with it are the spark plug wires themselves. But I'm hoping that I've timed them correctly and they'll fire up. Definitely gonna make sure she's tied down. I'm legitimately a little nervous. What do you guys think? You know what to do, put in the comments. Do you think it's gonna start or not? I honestly have no clue whatsoever. My brain is scrambled when it comes to whatever happened with this thing, but here it goes. Everybody, you know what to do. Can I get a clear prep? Woo! Well, it wants to, doesn't it? All right, clear prep. Just come on, light my fire. Woo, go. All right. Well, you lost the bet. It started right up. Boom. It's on like Donkey Kong. That makes me feel better. We got this thing where it fired right up again. We got about five knots inside this box. See what we got. Basically, ooh, hey. Twizzler. Hmm. Uh. That's it's just tape and more tape and even more tape and a squeegee razor thing. Uh, oh, look, more tape. Soaring Eagles thermal. No, oh, that's for glider stuff. This is kind of like a powered glider with 180 horse self launching. I'll be the first to admit, no idea how to put any of this stuff on, which is which here. Safety tape versus mylar gap tape versus premium gap tape versus transfer tape. I was just told this is what I needed. I, I think I'm gonna have to Google and YouTube some videos on how to do this. All right, idiot's guide to applying gap seal tape. That's exactly what we're looking for. Perfect. Oh, that's how it's supposed to go on there. Clean this bad boy up. Oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna go with the uh, gap tape here, 38 millimeter wide. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, that's just the plasticky stuff. For you glider people out there are probably just dying laughing watching me experience what you guys are probably like, yeah, no, this is normal. We do this every time we pull the glider out and have to attach it or you know put the wings back on it. Like I said, uh, we're gonna start out with the safety tape. Boom. Yep, look at that. I feel like it's going faster already. You know, minus the bubbles. Oh, I love it. 
Let's get to the bottom. So I guess that is going to go right there. It doesn't seem super sticky, if I'm honest with you. I mean, that's got to be worth at least one knot right there. And the other one is two knots. And then we'll put a thing on the bottom of this and then the top of that. I think it's going to work. Let's go to the other side. Oh, yeah. Oop, oop, don't twist. Ow. All right, I think that's trash. Gonna try a little grandpa's cough medicine here. 91 proof. I guess that would be 40. No, it'd be 182 proof. That's how that works. It's backwards. Gotta wipe it all off really good. Get that super duper clean. Here's what all my Google search taught me. Supposed to put that on last. Put this as double-sided tape. Put that down. And then this is nothing more than like really thin plastic and that covers the gap and lays on top of it. Then you take this and stretch it out and that seals it like it's layers like this. That's my understanding of how this whole thing is supposed to work. I'm sure that this is not how you're supposed to do this. Oh, look at that. That's our little glue strip. And then you put this on. I feel like I'm on a cooking show. You just take a, a little bit for you, a little bit for you. Since these are our flaps, they only go down. That means I can cover this bit right here because they don't need to come up like the ailerons. I mean, really, the question is, is this actually gonna make any difference whatsoever? I think it will. I actually do. Silas, do you think this is gonna be faster? How much faster? That's the real question. We know it's going to be faster, but how much faster? I mean, look at that. I think this one change and roughly, what, 100, 100 bucks? I don't even think it was that much. It was like 65 bucks for all the tape and all this stuff. And it's not permanent, which means technically, legally, you can do this to your certified airplane. I think this is going to be five knots right here just on this even on this airplane five knots byron the guy who built this this is the reason i bought this particular airplane because he took so much time making sure everything was perfect lined up exactly and that's why we get such small gaps on things like this and even whenever i move it up move it down i mean it that is a really really tiny gap so honestly, I don't see how it's going to improve any from, from where it's at right now. But I guess for the sake of doing it, we probably should just do it to make sure that we got everything. There's no questions asked. So Byron, again, great job building this airplane. I can't even get my fingernail in some of this. Boom shakalaka. We got a flight control check, aileron. Full deflection that way, yes. Full deflection that way, yes. Barrel roll, barrel roll. We only got one bump right here. That little bump right there. So, it'll be fine. I think this wing is done. Now let's go do the other wing. Not supposed to have liquid inside here. I think what happened is it rained heavy and water got inside here. So we're gonna have to do the only reasonable thing and just drill a hole in it. Oh, I have no idea where it's gonna come out. I don't know if I should drill down here or up here. Probably I'll do up here because we're covering that anyway. Oh, there it is. That's a lot of water that's coming out of this thing. I should have taped up the bottom first because now it's gonna be all wet <laughs> when I'm laying on the ground over here. Look at the water that's coming out of this thing. Battery on the camera went dead. He's had time to turn it off, to go change the battery, to come back. It's still leaking. California would probably pay a hefty premium right now for as much water that came out of this thing. We could have filled Lake Mead up with all this water. Oh yeah, those are a lot lighter now. Look at that. Yeah, we need to go do the other side. We're at right about here. Sure.
Oh, yep, there it comes. We struck oil. There wasn't near as much water in this one. The other one might still be dripping. Boy, this is a lot lighter now. Full acrobatic mode. What airplanes do you think would be a good race for old Cameron here, huh? We've got the Apache, which has 180 horsepower engines. That one will be interesting because it climbs really, really well. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but the climb to 10,000 feet, that'll be a challenge. The silver bullet right there, that's pretty fast on the top end and it climbs pretty well as well. So that, I think that one is gonna be a really close race. The Sierra, not anything, nothing about that is gonna be faster than this. Oh, we got the other Aztec up north that we're working on when we get that thing fixed. So we'll have to race that. The MIG, that could be interesting. Yeah, it would probably win. <laughs> So, slightly faster. It can almost go, what, three times faster than this thing? Is that right? We got 230 miles an hour here, and that one does, what is it, 600 and something miles an hour? It's Mach 0.92, and they have to limit it to that because any faster than the wings, like, crumple and it tumbles and people die. Yeah, that one, that one would be interesting. What about the T6? I think this could still take the T6 as well. I don't even know what other airplanes we got. I don't know, maybe some of you have some fun airplanes that would be a, a good race for the old uh, Lance Air here. So I think we'll have to set some of that up. Let me know in the comments what you got. And if you think you want to lay down a gentleman's bet of $1 bill to see who can uh, be the fastest, both in straight and level and climb from 1,000 to 10,000 feet. You think you got what it takes? You know, this is honestly pretty easy. You know, that's why I say right now, until I go flying and then one of these things loosens up, it's tangled up in the flight controls, and I have to use a parachute that I don't have yet. I think I may have made this a little too close. Yeah, I did. Well, it looks like we get to do this one over again anyway. <gasps> wow! That is some good tape. Look at that. Yep. That's good tape. That's gonna help us go faster. We have less, uh, less weight now. Ready? That is satisfying. No problem. <laughs> All right, here's the big test. Oh yeah, full deflection. Yeah. Hmm, that one kind of goes up in there a little bit. Might have to put just a little piece of tape right there on that part there. Cause it doesn't come out. It's got a big old gap right there. Okay, let go. Hey, oh, duct tape. Especially Yeah. All right. So you still got some water in there. Okay. I'm going to keep my eye on you, buddy. I think that's all the control surfaces. We need to check the control, the flaps, make sure they come down again. I see a spot I need to trim right there. All right. Let me trim that down there. And then I think it's lunch time. Lunch. <laughs> Brisket for me. Boom. Yummy. Oh, man. And out. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I am curious about this part, though. Right here, that's a pretty big gap. This right here, it's also a pretty big gap. Mm -hmm. Although, so the wind, as we fly through the air this way, if we have it attached to the canopy on the top, it just sits on there like this. If the wind comes in and catches it somehow, it could just go and become like a break. But here and here, I think we could definitely do that. This might actually slow us down more than it speeds us up. Okay, here's our test fit. Oh, that's not good. What about this side? Yeah. I don't think that's going to help our chances of 
breaking the sound barrier. Because it comes up, and then when you're inside, it goes whoop, like that. And it just... Ah, yeah, this side's all jacked up over here too. Hmm, I'm sure it'll be fine. Hey Mike, yeah, I'm ready for that race. All right, I'll see you here tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. You're going down, brother. See you. We got ourselves a little race with a twin engine, 180 horsepower, twice as much power as this one. My money's still on Cameron. Mike. Morning. All right, are you ready to lose? I'm ready to win. Ready to win. So seriously though, do you think that this is gonna beat it? We know that it's not gonna beat it on the top speed. We know that. No. Do you think it's gonna beat it on the climb to 10,000? It's hot and sticky and muddy this day? Maybe. Maybe 10. Maybe to 10. You wanna make it interesting? Sure. All right, well how about one dollar. Well, it's not yours yet. I figured I'd take it already. One dollar. One dollar. I think I got one to match that. All right. So one dollar. We're going to see if it. it's... All right. He's got the money. So you guys saw it. So we got Goliath. This isn't even Goliath. This is kind of a baby twin. But they do have 180 horse on each side against uh, David over here. Cameron has got 180 horse up front. Just one. So put in the comments, do you guys think that this one with the two engines is going to be able to beat that one with just one engine from a climb from 1,000 feet to 10,000? Feeling pretty cocky? We're going to try this. All right. Well, you guys know what to do. Grab your floppy hat, get your sunglasses, let's strap in and show this feller what's what. Plan C traffic, 131 Delta Papa, we are taking runway 10 for departure. Plan City. Oh, this little girl needs all the runway she can get. You only need 800 in that one. I <laughs> uh, just kidding. Both are just coming up. Everybody's happy. Good old pressure, oh yeah. Airspeed's alive, 80, 90, rotate. And up and out. Break. Gear up. All right, boys. Plan City traffic. Lance Air 8261 Echo departing runway 10. Plan City. So I'm going to catch up with him. We're going to line up. And then we're just going to say one, two, three, go. All right. Airspeed is alive. 37 instruments are in the green. We do not have airspeed. All right, abort takeoff. We do not have airspeed. Fuel uh, pumps off. 8261 Echo, as aborted takeoff, I don't have uh, accurate airspeed. I'm returning back. Hey, we're doing a brake check. Brakes work. I'm showing. 34 knots. That's really weird that I'm showing 35 knots and it's just stuck at 35 knots. How about you, Jimmy? You're back there. You're hiding from me. You're scared. I'm flying ahead of 170. Looking for you. Hey, Mike, I aborted my takeoff and I am pulling back into the shade hangar. Uh, roger that. Um, I'll turn around and come back, sir. Roger that. I did not have accurate airspeed, so I'm pulling over to the shade to take a look at things. Uh, 10-4, roger. Well, guys, he chickened out. I uh, see how it is. Oh, look at that. It's stuck at 36 knots. That's no bueno. Alright. Oh, man! I done broke it. You didn't have a chance to drive it. I broke it. Well, that didn't last long, did it? Here we go. 
got another guy over here. That's pretty cool. That, I believe, yes, the Columbia 400, that used to be a Lancer with a fixed gear, Lancer 4 with a fixed gear, and that thing is pretty darn quick. It will move and get with it. And this is super fast, but it only goes, according to the uh, speedometer, 36 knots right now. So, yeah, we gotta figure out what came disconnected. So here's this little thing here that tells me how fast we're going. Air comes in here, and the faster the air comes in there, the more pressure it puts, which tells the little box in there how fast we're going. And I checked it, but maybe it's, yeah, it's not clogged. It's a little inside. Looks clean. That doesn't count as a win, you know. Do not, did not finish. Did not even it. start. I didn't make it to 10,000 either. So. Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> so we got this. This is, you know, the, the pedo tube. I'm gonna have to blow on it to see if there's anything stuck in there. This is not appropriate. Okay, I'm gonna cover that. Hey, something came loose in there. That is crazy. I had the cover on it. I checked it and everything. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to have to suck and blow on it to see if we can get that loot, whatever chunk of something is stuck in here. So, uh, yeah, this is very inappropriate for YouTube and all audiences. So just found it. Oh, it's all gritty now. That's what it was. Now it's stuck on my teeth. Oh, so gross. I think there might have been a bug in there too. Come on, Mike, push. He's gonna pull a muscle. How was that workout? <laughs> <laughs> too bad I gotta go hot factory while I leave here. Yeah, and then you get to go to work after you leave here. Correct. I know this is showing off, and I don't even care. I'm towing this thing out one hand by myself. Man, I love this airplane. Look at that. Not even out of breath. I don't know what his problem was. And just like that. Let's go. Cooper up. You behind me, Jimmy? I am uh, number two behind you. Airspeed alive. 60. 80. Rotate. Positive rate. All right, let's go. Full power. There's our RPM. Rudder. Coming alive. Airspeed is alive now. That's good. There we go. I like that. Flight City Traffic, 62, Charlie, 65, 67, Woo, it's been a while. Alright, gears are coming up. Uh, what I was going to say is what Jimmy doesn't know is I got several hundred hours at this plane. I can tweak it as best I can. But we shall see. He took off. You took off a few minutes before me. I've got you in sight. Coming up on you now. Roger that. Bogey engage. I did do a 360 back there waiting on you. Yeah, right. And what's your cruising speed right now? Uh, 135 miles an hour, 20 inches of manifold pressure at about 2300, 2300 RPM. Roger that. Go ahead and slow her down to 125 miles an hour, and then I'll join you, and then we'll uh, get ready for our climb up. All right, I am at your 5 o'clock coming up on you now. I see you over there. Trying to cheat already. That's pretty cool. Sir, are you ready to do this thing? Going to 10,000 wind to back. Roger that. On your mark. Get set. Go. We're going. There we go. Full power ram air is in. We got our pump off. We're 15. We're that off. I have no idea where he's at. 
Bravo 2450 on the props. I'm seeing 1580 for feet per second. Feet per minute. I'm doing about 1200 ish. Come on, she's high back there. Must be already over me. We're hanging about 12, 1300 foot a minute, that's all we can get out of this old girl. Sure, blame it on the age. <laughs> it could be the pilot's fault. Well, I didn't want to mention anything. I'm seeing about 1400 right now, 4500 feet. Well, I'm right at 4500 feet as well, and I'm at about 1300. Ooh, this is a good race. 7300 at 1000 foot a minute. Oh, man. Come on, baby, come on. She thinks she can. 9,000 at 900 feet a minute. I'm at 88 and doing 1,000. 98. 10,000 feet, woo! 9,800 feet. Nicely done. All right, you go ahead and uh, turn around and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come past you on your right. All right, I'll turn around to zero, zero, zero. Do north. All right, now we're gonna go catch him and do our top speed run. Let's see if any of this stuff made it. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is it gonna make any difference on this? Uh, you beat me by a couple hundred feet, but we probably burned three times as much fuel over here. That is a affirmative for sure, man. All right, we are gonna level off at 9,000. 10,000 I mean. And we are. We'll cruise along about 130. Hey, permit, I'll see you in a second. Oh, there he is. All right, bogey in sight coming up on your right. All right, we're gonna fly up and see just what the speed difference is between 200 knots and 120, 110 knots. Oh, roger that. Oh yeah. Coming up, I see him. Now that was quick. Yeehaw! Yeah, it surprised me. I honestly thought I would. Uh, this thing would go a lot faster up than that thing would. Yep, 198. So close. And I think the changes that I made to it actually made it slower. I'm only showing 193 knots now. Well, experimental is trial and error. All right, I'll meet you back at Plant City. Losers! Losers! Boom! But you know what? We got something else for you. Oh, another day. Oh. Another challenge. All right, what else you got? I got 401. A little more horsepower, a little better climb rate. How many horsepower is in that? 600. 300 aside. 300 aside. Turbocharged. Ooh. So I don't lose it going up. Woo! I think we might have to do some more, put some more BTUs under the hood Probably before we take, take that race. What's your, uh, what's the top speed on that thing? Top speed, I do about 180 knots cruise. That'll be close. That'll be pretty close for a top speed run. All right, well, you heard it. He's challenging us to another race in a different airplane. Uh, before we do that, we're gonna have to go spin this dollar and get a bunch more BTUs under the hood of this thing. Well, Mike, yeah, you lost. I so lost. lunch is my treat. I know this fantastic Mexican restaurant. It's the Ooh. best stuff you're ever gonna have. Mexican? Yeah, oh, come right. on, join Let's me. Do it.